Hello everyone and welcome back to another YA Book Talk. If you were anything like me this past summer, you waited impatiently for the latest installment of the ever popular Netflix series, Stranger Things. And it did not disappoint. I'm looking at you, Eddie. Its premiere episode opens as 12 year old Will Byers is wrapping up a 10 hour Dungeons and Dragons session with his friends, Lucas, Dustin and Mike. It's November 6, 1983, and unbeknownst to any of them, a monster from another dimension has escaped the nearby Hawkins National Laboratory. As Will cycles home, he encounters this monster and tries to run away from it. He's caught and taken into the Upside Down. His mother, Joyce, and the local sheriff, Hopper, work tirelessly to find and rescue him. While also looking for Will, his friends encounter Eleven, who has also escaped from Hawkins' lab. She is a very she is very strange and has the ability to move things with her mind. She also has the ability to travel to the Upside Down without actually physically going there. Now, we have several Stranger Things books that you can borrow from my library, but I would like to talk about some books that are similar to Stranger Things. They may take place during the 1980s, have a character from another dimension, or involve the role-playing game Dungeons and Dragons. So are you ready? Let's talk about Stranger Things read-alikes. And as always, I have to give you this warning, spoilers ahead. So let's talk First up is The Sacrifice Box by Martin Stewart. It's the summer of 1982 and five friends, September, Sepp, Arkel, Mac, Lamb, and Hadley have found an ancient stone box in the woods. They've decided to take their most prized possessions and place them into this mysterious container. However, they have three rules. Never come to the box alone, never open it after dark, and never take back your sacrifice. Unfortunately, none of them ever know if anyone has followed the rules because soon after the group stops hanging out and sadly starts, they drift apart. Now it's 1986 and strange and terrible things start to happen. Inanimate things move on their own and supernatural birds seem to thirst for blood. Has someone opened the box and negated their pact? Where has this box come from and does it have a history? <laughs> Do Sepp, Arkel, Mac, Lamb, and Hadley ever become friends again? Well, you have to read The Sacrifice Box to find out. Next is The Secret Hour by Scott Westerfeld. Sophomore Jessica Day is new to Bixby, Oklahoma. Not much seems to happen there, but the town undergoes a weird phenomenon every night. At midnight, the, tone, the town freezes in time for an hour. No one seems to know that this is actually happening except for the Midnighters, a small group of teens who can move freely around Bixby during this secret hour, quote unquote. One night, Jessica becomes an unexpected member of this group. Now wandering around your hometown in the middle of the night, undetected, for an extra hour may sound exciting, but there are weird creatures who emerge during these 60 minutes. At first, they seem apprehensive around the Midnighters, but lately they seem to be getting restless. How long will the Midnighters be able to keep these creatures at bay? And will they ever cross into the daytime? Why does this time freeze happen? And how long will the town stay normal? Quote unquote. Well, you'll have to read The Secret Hour to find out. The series continues in Touching Darkness and Blue Noon. Finally, I have Into the Wild Nerd Yonder, My Life on the Dork Side by Julie Halpern. Sophomore Jesse, yes, another character named Jessica, has always looked forward to the first day of school. She actually likes school and is a good student. 
so much so that you'll pro you would probably call her a mathlete. She also likes to hang out with her friends, Biza and Char. She even has her own sewing business and she wears a different homemade skirt every day. But lately things have been changing. Her friends have gone punk and don't want to hang out anymore. And her big brother has gone off to college. Jessie starts her school year off feeling pretty lonely. However, one day in class, she gets invited to participate in a, no in a local Dungeons and Dragons group. Jessie's intrigued, but she, she worries that hanging out with the D&D &D group would make her a, a nerd by association. Does she ever end up playing D&D? &D? Does she ever stop worrying about what other people think of her? Does she ever move on and make new friends? Well, you'll have to read Into the Wild Nerd Yonder, My Life on the Dork Side, to find out. All of the books I've mentioned are available to, available to borrow from our young adult area, which is located on the second floor of the Allentown Public Library. Thanks for watching and join me next time for another YA Book Talk.